Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have a second-hand book haul for you. If you didn't know, I work in a charity shop and we were allowed to open our doors to the public for the first time last Monday. It's always been a bit dangerous for me to work in a charity shop because we get second-hand books, which means cheap books, which means that often if I just have the slightest interest in a book, then I will acquire it and then I will worry about it later. <sighs> Recently, hauling books has become something of a problem of mine in that I keep acquiring them so much so that I could probably paper my walls or make very good insulation with them. I could probably put the foundations down for a motorway. I've got that many books at the moment. The first book that we've got here, I'm not going to discuss. It's The Christmasaurus by Tom Fletcher. Yes, we had a Christmas book donated to our shop in April. And yes, I purchased it immediately thinking of my nephew. Next, let's talk about some books that I have acquired from friends. Firstly, my friend Joy was getting rid of some books and she told me to go through this box of books that she had, take what I wanted and then donate the rest to the charity shop. So I took what I wanted. I sent a picture straight to my friend Emily of Novel Novels to ask whether she wanted any of the others and the rest will be going to the charity shop. But the three that I picked out um, begin with The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I've wanted to read Toni Morrison for years and I've never bitten the bullet and done so. This book was there so I thought that I would take it. Now this says that it was the winner of the 1993 Nobel Prize for Literature but nowhere on the book does it tell me what the book is actually about. It just tells me what people thought of the book. When I do eventually read this I will be going in with no idea what the book is about. Uh, next, I got The Refugees by Viet Thanh Nguyen. Supposedly, this is a collection of short stories. Admittedly, I only took this one out of the box because I had heard about this one before and I remember it being somewhat hyped. According to the first line of the blurb, Viet Thanh Nguyen is giving voice to lives led between two worlds, the adopted homeland and the country of birth, and that it's beautifully written and sharply observed. So we will see about that. It's been a while since I read a short story collection. I don't know how we'll get on. Because sometimes with short stories being of that form, I find it very easy to read one short story and put the book down and then forget that I'm reading. I got The Country Girls by Edna O'Brien and this one was because Joy had be I remember her saying that she'd enjoyed this when she'd read it years ago but from what I can see this time around she's only got to page 56 and decided to unhaul it so we'll see how I feel about this one as we will all of these books at a later date hopefully um, if I just unhaul them without saying anything that could happen too. Girls in a convent school in the 1960s my friend Charlie, formerly of Charlie Brook, got in touch and asked whether I would like some books. We often swap books with each other if we don't plan on rereading them. Firstly, the book that Charlie got in touch with me about this time was Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, which I believe has been long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And again, I don't really know what it's about, but it's supposedly a uniquely trans take on love, motherhood and those exes who you just can't quit. And I do remember Elif Batuman has blurbed this book and mentioned Sex in the City. So as soon as I read the first line of this, I read it in the voice of Sarah Jessica Parker. So if that continues throughout the whole thing, I don't know how we're going to get on. I don't know about any of these books, quite honestly. I'd hope to be speaking more about them uh, and having some ideas to give you an idea as to why I was interested in them. Because otherwise, we're just here not talking about much. But the fact of the matter is that we're now five books in and all I've said is I've got them and I'm looking forward to reading them. But hey, I'm going to say the same thing about Soul Taurus by Bernadine Evaristo. I forgot that me and Charlie had agreed that I would take this book off her hands. This is the tale that travels throughout time and is somewhat experimental in scope, blending 
prose and poetry to tell its narrative, which is Stanley Williams is in his 30s and grieving the death of his Jamaican father. Yes, I'm reading the blurb. And then there is Jesse O'Donnell, who is a barmaid and former singer cum comedian, desperate to get into her rusty old larder neither and hit the freeway across Europe, which then leads into this weaving of time and metafiction and that sort of thing. And it does sound quite like a book that I really would have enjoyed to have around when I was at uni reading more experimental fiction. And again, that is one of the things that I want to be doing with my reading going forward, is really seeking out the things that I know I have enjoyed in the past and reading them. Uh, at the moment, I'm not really wanting to look for much new in ways of fiction, and maybe that's a bad thing, but I would like to continue to read writers I've already read and perhaps steer clear from filling my shelves with new authors at this point. So Bernadine Evaristo is a writer who I have now read two books by, Girl, Woman, Other and Mr Loverman, which we all know I preferred. But from the sounds of things, I'm going to enjoy So All Tourists as well. Just looking at it fills me with hope that I will have found another book to enjoy. Right, let's move on to the books that I have got from the charity shop. And I'm going to do these in no particular order. I will go firstly with It's Hard to Be Hip Over 30 by Judith Biust, whose surname I still haven't figured out how to pronounce. But this is a Persephone classic, and we don't usually get these donated to the charity shop, therefore I decided that I would get it. It is poetry, American poetry at that, and unfortunately I don't seem to be enjoying it. So this is two collections put into this one bind up volume and it does have an introduction by the author that I'm not going to read until I've got to the end of the book because I found that oftentimes an introduction can spoil a book have you not previously read it. There is a lot of humour and wit in these poems and I do enjoy that aspect but there have been more misses than hits when it comes to the actual content. However, we'll see how I feel going forward. Next, I got Silence by Shusoku Endo, with a foreword by Martin Scorsese and translated by William Johnston. Last year, I got The Samurai by Shusoku Endo, and I didn't read that. Recently, I've been reading a lot of books with religious allusions or discussions of religion and finding that I am appreciating that and apparently this is something that Shusaku Endu did a lot. It's strange when I've just said about not wanting to add new authors to my shelves that I'm adding another new author. There is part of me that wants to continue to read the authors whose works I know and have enjoyed, but I didn't read Hilary Mantel until last month and decide that I wanted to go through all of her works. I've yet to read Shusaku Endo, but I recognise the author's name and there was something about the book which is to do with a Jesuit priest going to Japan to help the oppressed Japanese Christians of the time, which this book's set in 1640. So there's that historical aspect there as well, where technically this book shouldn't be something that I enjoy, yet the blurb, the cover and the author spoke to me. I'm a conundrum, trying to figure out my own thoughts on what I want to be reading in the moment. I got Death in Venice by Thomas Mann, which includes many other stories, just because it's Thomas Mann. And I have yet to read Thomas Mann, despite a friend of mine giving me one of his works when I was younger and asking me to read it because it was her favourite book. Now we're going to move on to some books which all have a similar theme. Firstly, we have The Perfect King, The Life of Edward III, Father of the English Nation by Ian Mortimer. Edward III's name came up somewhat in the Wolf Hall, Thomas Cromwell trilogy by Hilary Mantel. And because of that, I wanted to get this book. Now, it's quite a dense volume and it has rather small text. However, I've had an idea about how to get through my non-fiction books and it's a rather simple one really. Just 
chop them up. That's it. For some reason, I've got it into my head that I have to read loads all at once to make a book matter and to fill up a wrap up at the end of the month. But this book has 17 chapters. There are more than 17 days in a month. So even just reading a chapter a day, I will get this book finished within the month. I kind of like the idea about going back to the Wolf Hall trilogy in future and perhaps knowing more of what Mantel's getting at or just knowing more of the history of my own country. Then we have The Six Wives of Henry VIII by Alison Ware. All I remember from school was divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. And I rather enjoyed learning about the Tudors when I was at school, yet when it came to reading the Cromwell trilogy, I actually knew little about what was being discussed. I, I thought I would get this and educate myself some more. Then we have Dissolution by C.J. Sampson. This is a crime series, the Matthew Shardlake series, set during the times of Thomas Cromwell and is a series that I have been meaning to read for years, but I always get thrillers or and books of this ilk from the charity shop or the library. The library's never had Dissolution in and the charity shop, we always get the later books. So as soon as I saw that we had this, I bought this. Here we have Henry VIII proclaiming himself supreme head of the church and a team of commissioners has been sent throughout the country to investigate monasteries. Their only outcome can be dissolution. But one of Cromwell's commissioners, Robert Singleton, is found dead and Matthew Shardlake, lawyer and long-time supporter of reform, has been sent by Cromwell to uncover the truth behind the dark happenings. So, sounds like fun. Then I've got A History of Wales by John Davis. Now this book is again another long one but it started with Once Upon a Time and I thought well that's a good way to start history. I don't really know why I wanted to hear about the history of Wales but I think that, that book is going to go some more into the folklore and the mythology that I didn't previously know about with Wales and tell you more about its people. There was just something there that piqued my interest and considering the book was only a pound it was worth the punt. And finally, we have Starting Point. Was this actually written by Hayao Miyazaki? It might have been, yeah. Translated by Beth Carey and Frederick Alshout. And this was published by Studio Ghibli as well. So this is a collection of essays, interviews and memoirs going back to Miyazaki's childhood. I am one of those people who has been a fan of Miyazaki's work since I first saw Howl's Moving Castle as a teenager. This only covers the years from 1979 to 1996. I don't know whether there is more, but I got it and I thought it might be interesting just to dip in and out of as I see fit. I think one of the things about Halls is that when you acquire books, well, when I acquire books, I have this sense of excitement about all of them. Then I struggle to figure out which book to pick up next. And we have a lot of books here. I, I want to share my excitement with the world, but I can't really do that without reading the books. So that's where halls come in. But then I don't know enough about the books. So then I have to figure out why am I so excited about the books? Why am I so excited about reading a book about Miyazaki? I've not seen every single one of his films. Why am I excited about the history of Wales when I've only ever been to Rill? I don't know. But I was. Ugh. Am I just turning into, like, a really old, boring man at this point? Is this where I've reached? Did, like, 28 just come along and say, do you know what? Just sink into the boredom now. You have nothing else going for you. I don't know. If you've read any of these books and think I should prioritise one over the other, please feel free to let me know in the comments alongside, I don't know, your thoughts on halls. I hope that you got something out of this video. Even if it was sheer boredom, at least you felt something. And until next time, that is all.